contacts. Okay, so if you want if you want to turn on your live captions, you need to turn on from your side. And to turn on the live captions at the top, there is a menu on the top. There is a three dots. It says more options. Please click on that link at the button and in, under that button you will have the turn on live captions to turn on the live caption. Uh, good afternoon everyone. Thank you for attending our webinar today. First, I would like to introduce ourselves and our center. I am Ismahan Arslan Ari. I am an assistant professor of learning design and technologies at the College of Education. And I am also the director uh, of the South Carolina Center for Assistive Technology and Education Research. Um, today, I will present with my colleague, Dr. David Dawson. Dr. Dawson is a clinical associate professor at the School of Medicine, and he is also the co-director of the South Carolina Center for Assistive Technology and Education Research. And he has more than 25 years of experience in working with people with disabilities. I have been learning a lot from him. And uh, before starting to our webinar, I would like to uh, give a brief information about our center and our multi-user lab. Um, if you did if you did not hear anything about us, uh, please feel free to come and visit us and explore our tools. Um, South Carolina Center for Assistive Technology and Education Research is a collaborative interdisciplinary environment of faculty, professionals and uh, people with disabilities working together to enhance the lives of persons people with disabilities in the area of school and transition to work. And we are located at the campus at the Child Development Research Center building. It is 1532 Wheat Street. Uh, it is just next to the Blood Center. And uh, with the collaboration, uh, with the collaboration of the Child Development Research Center, we established the Students with Disabilities in STEM Multi User Lab for research, training, and outreach. It is also located in the same place. And in this lab, we have cutting edge technologies. We have robots, we have virtual reality, and eye tracking, and to undertake critical research on and provide impactful training, outreach, and support for students with disabilities in STEM field. Uh, and we use, uh, we have lots of assistive technologies to support those, you know, the people with disabilities in the STEM field. And we will be happy to collaborate if you and your students need any support. And we also, you know, our center also, uh, I, I told this interdisciplinary and one of our um, a colleague is also from the College of Engineering, Dr. Neshet Hikmet. And in today's webinar, we will talk about the speech recognition. What is out there, benefits and using them. First, we will provide some information about research uh, speech recognitions. Then uh, we will demonstrate several speech, speech recognition tools. And uh, during the presentation, if you will have any questions, any comments, please feel free uh, to type on the chat or uh, you can unmute yourself and um, ask your questions. Now I will leave the floor to Dr. Dawson. All right, thank you. And uh, it's great to be a part to share this with you. I've been actually doing voice recognition since the beginning. So um, this is one that has changed greatly. I also recognize that we have some other colleagues who have expertise in this, and I'm always welcoming you to join in. So what we're going to do again, voice recognition is show the different types. I'll talk a little bit about the history of it, um, but it's changed greatly. So we're going to look at some, what is the difference between freeware versus some that cost? What are the different systems between Android, Apple, uh, what we're using right now for some of the closed caption? And then the questions about, should we use uh, free or when we are working with our students, should we tell them to pay for it? Um, and we'll try to answer those questions. I'll also try to answer the questions of why it's successful and why it's not. What are some of the things that I've learned through the years of why, how to make voice recognition uh, basically that is success. Uh, the, and so, next slide. 
All right, some brief history of it. I love uh, just because I want to show that voice recognition has been around for a long time, but it's also right there. Um, the 62 is when that, uh, the World Fair is the first kind of demonstration of this. We actually then showed that in the 60s and 70s, they were looking at progressive to it. It really wasn't into the 80s until we really see touch to speech program by uh, Dr. Kurzweil. And again, where I come into it, and this was uh, an amazing thing for part of my disability is that I have a problem with language. And so how I see things, how I type is completely different. And so typing for me was not just a chore, but not always the words would be correct. Different things, dysgraphia. So when speech recognition came about, this was just totally universal. Um, I was into it uh, in the 80s, but in the 90s is when I really got into it right there. In the 1990s, uh, I remember my one of my labs at the University of Iowa. We had a cutting edge speech recognition system that cost $26,000 for the speech board. It cost another uh, $1,000 for the speech program. And it typed an amazing uh, between 15 to 20 words a minute. So you would have to really talk like this is how I am talking. And at that time, for those of you who may not remember, we had the great thing. We didn't have Microsoft at that time. We had WordStar. And so although it was an extremely primitive system by our standards now, at that time, it was phenomenal. Take a look to now. We have gotten basically in the 90s continuous system. We see voice recognition constantly applying, constantly evolving. The idea that original speech recognition was discrete versus continuous, and discrete is one letter at a time, where the computer is basically analyzing your word file. So I would usually say 400 words out loud, and from that it would give me a template of almost 40,000 words. The great thing about discrete systems, even though they're very slow, they're highly accurate. And one of the ways is for persons who may have uh, language deficiencies, persons who have um, cardiac uh, language uh, issues right there. I have actually tried it and in 19, um, I'd say 94 is when I had my first person who came in with cerebral palsy. Their speech articulation was something I had very difficult understanding and they wanted to use speech recognition to write a book because of that. In other words, they'd have to do one pad with a click and it was just too long. And in my logical mind, I said this in my first mind, I said this won't work and my logical mind, I said, why not? So we used discrete system and the great thing about discrete system, it did not matter what the word. So if they it was the word paint. But they saw on the word on the screen and they said doink or dank. It did not matter if it's there. It was looking at their wave file, their word file. And this person, one of the things, the very first time that they did this, they got 80% accuracy, which was amazing that how it interpreted. And so we had a whole new thing there looking at the idea of this as also a tool for persons with communication disabilities. Problem is, no one wants to talk at this is me writing a letter. So continuous speech uh, came into a process and what they did with that, instead of the individual speech that we're used to right there, uh, one discrete systems, they've made algorithms. And so what they would do is get this idea of what was a normal, what was considered normal speech. And they would make algorithms so that as long as you fit in this normal category, you can actually speak fairly rapidly. Speech recognition has totally evolved where we're using it to uh, 
closed captioning. We're using it on our cell phones. We're using it on, on a, a variety of applications now. And it is totally gone to the point of from 20 words a minute to up to about 180 words a minute if you're right there, which is really phenomenal. But saying that, why doesn't everyone use it? And that's part of why we're here. Okay. Okay, when you search speech recognition tool uh, for yourself or for your students, you might see three different terms, speech recognition, speech to text or speech transcription. And although the terms can be confusing, they all talk about the similar technologies with a minor difference on their functions. Uh, when we look at the definitions, you know, speech recognitions are the technologies which recognize um, voice and serve as a main interface between you and computer. It is the, you know, the, uh, it is the interface that you can control your computer. OK, but you know, when we look at the speech to text tools, those are the technologies that which recognize your voice and transfer spoken text into the digital text only. And the speech transcription is the same as the speech to text, but um, the transcription is done by a human. You need to pay. You know, usually it is um, uh, it is mainly used for during, the, for example, the virtual conferences. You can hire the transcription if your online system does not have any auto auto transcription. And um, these tools have a number of applications for people with and without disabilities. Even though um, we did not realize it, we all have used the speech recognition technologies in our daily lives. Uh, for example, smartphones designed with speech recognition system, uh, smart, uh, smart homes, uh, and automated phone menus and directories when you call the doctor's office are just a few examples that you daily use the speech, speech recognition technologies in your daily life. And uh, speech, speech recognition provides lots of benefits to people with, uh, with and without disabilities. And as an educator, it, de it decreases the time to provide the feedback. For example, if you are grading an essay, you can just talk and your feedback will be written automatically. And it provides alternate alternative access to the computer, especially for people with physical disabilities or with visual impairments. Uh, also, it increases independence for people with disabilities by speech recognition tools. They can use the computer and write uh, without any help. And uh, besides allowing the students to work independently, it also allows them to write without fear of uh, writing um, mechanics, for example, the speech spelling errors. Thus, it increases the right, decreases the writing anxiety. So, so it means the students or anybody who had the writing anxiety can easily, you know, the uh, write and just because they are going to talk and it will be written by the, you know, the by the by the tool. And uh, since they will not, since the, the people will not spend time to think about writing the mechanics, uh, the writing mechanics, it frees up the working memory to focus on their writing task. Um, therefore, it also boosts writing production and increase writing quality because they only focus on what they are going to write and they are not, they, they, they don't need to think about the spelling errors or you know how their writing is going to look like so it will be or if they speak you know write uh, type quickly or not so they just focus on the task the writing task and um, since the students can see the spelling of the words after they speak it can be the students you know uh, the younger kids or it can be the you know the uh, students whose language is not the you know, english is not their first language english language learners or other language learners, second language learners. So they learn the spelling of those words because they see how it is written. And um, speech also um, speech recognition tools are not always accurate, so it requires them to check the accuracy. While they are checking, um, they check their writing and find the errors. And especially when they need to compare the words that sound uh, alike and they need to compare those words and make the correction. This also helps them improve their reading skills. 
Would you like to anything, Dr. Dawson? I think you are perfect. Okay. And uh, as always, there are some <laughs> drawbacks and challenges. Uh, first one is uh, at the beginning, students might struggle a little bit because um, they 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 are not get, they don't get used to such systems. And uh, since uh, some speech speech recognition requires you to talk slowly, so young, especially younger children, you know, might struggle to get used to to talk slowly and it takes time for them to get used to it. But after they get used to how they use it, they, they will feel more comfortable. And um, tools are not proficient enough to recognize young children's voice and different accents. So uh, at this point, you know, the again, the children might struggle, but you know, after they try a little bit and also for the writing they might need to go and check the errors um, and um, if you are planning to use the speech recognition for young children again especially the early literacy you know the kids pre-k kindergarten or the first graders they might have difficulty in differentiating the writing and speaking because you know in writing they need to write something right but in uh, speaking they just speak but when you use the speech speech recognition when they speak it is written by you know automatically so they don't need to write uh, but uh, in the writing there are also some you know the rules that they need to follow for example punctuation younger kids they might not know how to use the punctuations accurately so for younger children you know we need to be careful how we are going to use the speech recognition systems uh, we can use it for their benefits to learn the punctuation, the spelling, but you know they need training on writing, and the, you know the, uh, the they need to learn the writing, what the writing is, what the speaking is. They need to differentiate it, and uh, it might be hard for the students who has low prior knowledge about punctuation. This is what I just mentioned. Uh, so, but you know uh, this can be we can use that drawback as a you know the additional you know the task for us to teach them how to use the punctuations after they talk maybe we can work with them to uh, include the correct punctuation and uh, and sometimes um, the auto you know the the auto correction because you know it automatically corrected and or the spelling you know you need to pay more high attention to what is written you need to go ahead and read what what is written and um, then you need to double check your writing and it's, it is the same for you know the if you are using the speech recognition as the uh, main feature to control your computer sometimes you know i think it, it was at the usually it, it was at the you know the first couple tries is that you know your speech you know you, you it doesn't get the command that you really want to give to the computer but it gets better after you do the practice And in this, you know, so far we just give some information about the speech recognition tools. And um, from now on, our webinar is going to be more practice based uh, demonstration. And in this webinar, we will cover Dragon Natural Speaking, Windows Voice Recognition, Macbook Dictation, Chromebook Dictation, Google Docs Voice Typing, Apple Voice Control, and iPhone, iPad, iPad Touch Dictations. And um, if you want to access, you know, the more information, how to use those, you know, in the presentation that I, you know, shared the link, those are, uh, you know, created as a link, so you can just click on it and access to more information how that you can use it. And my apologies, I'm going to tell it that the Mac is the only thing we won't be trying to show in there. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go through some of these right there and take a look at um, on this. And the first one is actually Dragon Naturally Speaking. And one of the things, again, what we want to show is I'm going to show the difference between speech recognition and, again, text uh, speech that recognize uh, dictation. And Dragon Naturally Speaking, Microsoft Word and a number of uh, speech recognition programs, some of the things that make it speech recognition is they have an AI symptom so that they are learning. 
they are learning as you speak and you must correct them. So if there's an error and you do not correct it, then it will assume that what you said is true. And so th that's one of the things that you have to remember with the speech recognition. It's kind of like a baby. And it has some areas of growth for both of you in there, which is different than speech to dictation. What we're going to talk about speech recognition. What is dragon actually speaking is probably the standard that is being used. It's gold standard. You'll see in have they have a separate for uh, medical lawyers there. It has a couple of different profiles to it. Um, prices range anywhere from 150 to 300 dollars. It can be used for uh, almost any application. Again, it has this uh, uh, amazing application process on it. So let me switch right here and we'll go to share. And. Include my sound. And I'm going to create a. Let's go to. All right, let's see what I got. OK. So one of the things I'm going to do is looks like I got my PowerPoint up, so I'm going to get rid of the PowerPoint right there. Okay. So Dr. Ari, can you all see the computer screen? My desktop? Yes. All right, that's good. I have appropriate stuff on here. All right, so why I've started um, what I did is I actually have a number of these already open in the background. I can take you through if you want to how to get to them, but I'm going to kind of show kind of a demonstration of different ones on there. So the first one actually is Dragon Naturally Speaking. It's actually sitting on there. I have currently everything turned off um, because everything turns to the profile. So I'm going to turn it on right there. Open Microsoft Word. Click blank. Go to sleep. Now the first thing we're going to see on this one is it, it you know, it's like I said opened it and then closed it. I said click blank, but it did not click blank and open it the way it should. Um, and that is a key feature right there. Sometimes we, it's uh, there's different commands on there. Click blank was actually Microsoft. Uh, new document would have been for uh, Dragon. And so there's sometimes you have to learn different documents in there. You'll see right here that it has a number of taskbars right there where it basically you can change this uh, pull menu to any way you want. It has profiles. One of the advantages about this is that you can put different profiles on here. I tell people that we all have different profiles. What people don't realize is throughout the day as you speak, sometimes you have a morning voice and you may have an afternoon voice. For my students, I tell them that they may have a Monday through Thursday voice and after Friday night, they may have a Saturday voice. OK, so the profiles are there because remember what we're doing is each profile is learning from your speech. It's learning the way you talk. It's learning the rhythm. And so with each one we train it. Um, the great thing about Dragon Naturally Speaking now is the training is pretty simple. It's just a few words right there and it picks it right up. Tools will allow you right there to notice that um, Dragon Pad is one if I say open Dragon Pad. Listen to me. Open Dragon Pad. Open Dragon Pad. Oh, you have to stop listening. I thought I knew it'd do that. Okay. It was giving me right there, and I think it's because I have too many things open at the same time, but we'll find out. Um, Dragon Pad is a kind of like a notebook is a really simple one that you can put into it has on Mac uh, transcribing. There's a lot of commands that are on here. This is the one of the things that people need to recognize. You can add a lot of commands to Dragon. What makes it different is you can make a lot of specializations. You can put a lot of just um, 
shortcuts there from your I, I could say just one word, two word, and it can open multiple things on my screen without there. The vocabulary is one that we can basically learn specific words. You can actually train it to learn your own phrase. One of the things they'll ask is, do you want it to go through your documents? And this is really good, especially for for me. I'm um, rehab and it's a collection of basically medicine, psychiatry, uh, psychology. All combined. And so we have a lot of words that sometimes I, I need to train right there. Audio is allows that you'll see. I'm going to try to demonstrate some of the different playback versus this uh, read that functions on this one. But the big thing to look on there is the improved recognition. Because of we're using continuous speech. And because that it's recognizing your words, sometimes you will need to have it learn more of your talk. And so there are some trainings you will go through and you just they'll give you things on the screen and you recite what you see on the screen and it will help to basically accurate. Make it more accurate on what you do. And then we have help on there. All right, so let me see if I can get this going now. I turned it off. Let me turn it on. This is a demonstration. Of how I use voice. Recognition systems to write my papers period. Voice recognition systems are. Significantly faster than I can type. Plus they have the ability. To let me hear my own words. Period. Select all. Play that. This is a demonstration. Of how I use voice recognition systems to write my papers period. Voice recognition systems are significantly faster than I can type. Plus they have the ability to let me hear my own words period. Go to sleep. All right, so this is one of the things and why may someone use this? Well, one of the reasons that it, is it allows you to see your own words. OK, um, there's another way I could have done this when I'll show you this one just uh, real quick. Um, listen to me. Select last line. Read that. Systems are significantly faster than I can type, plus they have the ability to let me hear my own words. Go to sleep. All right, so what you saw right there is the first one allowed me to hear my own words. The second one was the computer. There are significant reasons why someone should hear their own words. One is if they're having problems with uh, speaker recognition, not recognizing certain words, it may be how you say them. Part of the disability I have affects how I speak. I have a lot of I had to go through speech therapists. There's a lot of uh, things that sometimes I don't recognize that I will slur a word or my words will run off or I'll cut something off real quick or the word will be mangled or even not the one that I want. The play it back allows me to actually hear what I'm saying and then go through it. The read it function though is a really nice one because it reads it fairly quickly. And if you notice, I also have it reading it in a different, not my own words, because I don't like hearing myself a lot of times. Um, I have a very nice British voice. British voices are, uh, for me, a lot more fluent. You can have any type of voice you want on there. So, um, listen to me. New paragraph. This is what I wanted to say, period. Click file. Scratch that. Select file. And select that. So let me get off here. And let me ask if there's any questions you have about this system. And I'll come back to you.
before I start on the go ahead. Dr. Dawson, there is one question. I think it might be answered to that question at the end of the presentation, but you know, I think this is related to that question. Do you think is Dragon uh, easy to use if one has to include a lot of formatting, boldface, italics, underlines, superscripts, etc.? Yes. And it, it actually, it's really easy by just saying it, and I'll do that. Go back there, and what time do we have? Okay, I can do it. Actually, um, if I do it, I'll sh dem try to demonstrate this actually on the next one because it's a very virtually the same. Okay, so is does Dragon has you know work with bilingually? So does it have any Spanish or you know the other language support or not? Yes, you can actually it has quite a number of different languages that you can uh, use uh, and you could be a native speaker right there and it by understanding it's pretty phenomenal. My languages are dismal. I can speak uh, some Chinese, Japanese, German and Spanish and Dragon always looks at me and scratches his head <laughs> when I do it. So, okay. So, Melissa has a question. Does it work like Microsoft Word, where you can enlarge and bold the print? Yes, and it, it does. It, I was using Microsoft Word on that, and actually both systems do. So, um, let me go and switch to, right now to the next one, and I will show the difference because this is the other one. Um, so let me go and switch out of there and let me switch to another one right here, which actually is the one that comes with. Uh, Microsoft, this is the Microsoft system and. What this does at this moment is. Um, it's free with every Microsoft system. And there's pros and cons to it, so let me open this one up and just show a demonstration. Open word. Two, OK. Click blank. Stop listening. All right, can you see the word screen, Dr. Ari? Yes. Perfect. This is actually working. This is a demonstration. This is a demonstration. This is a demonstration to show how I can use the built in speech recognition system that comes with Microsoft. Correct microphones. Three, OK. Correct speech. Cancel. Select speech. Bold that. Click cancel. And I'm looking at myself because of that, the bold right there. And I'm going to real quick cheat. I love when things do that. Select speech. Click font. Click bold. Click size. 42. Click OK. Click 
close word. Don't save. Open Microsoft Edge. Click University of South Carolina. Two, OK. Click University of South Carolina. Two, OK. Click University of South Carolina. Click University of South Carolina. Cancel. And this is where the some of the problems we have sometimes and let's try it one more time. It should it started, but it just jumped off. Click University of South Carolina. Cancel. Mouse grid. One. Five. Click two. Stop listening. All right, so. What you saw was a little bit different there. Um, this is a really interesting Microsoft Word uh, Office recognition is very powerful, but it's also one that needs a, a significant amount of training. Even though I've trained it, you'll see that sometimes the things did not work the way it should. And so I had to use what we call a grid mouse. I had to have it go to the grid, and then zoom into it and click. This actually is a significant works for when we're talking about persons who may not be able to use um, a mouse or there we use grid mouse. I use it sometimes when I'm trying to focus in on things. Ideally, it should be working by just saying the Microsoft Word and you saw the one or two slash flash up and it basically said you want to do number one or two. Before I did this <laughs> training, it was working fine. Because I'm doing a voice recognition training, it's basically um, decided to be picky. Now, what you saw right there is that I basically um, used the same thing I did with uh, Dragon. I did a lot there. I was able to hear it. Um, I could have also gone and let you hear the speech right there. You wouldn't have heard my voice. You would have heard the computer's voice. So there's downside on that one. So let me do one more thing, a demonstration. I know we have time and then we'll um, I'm gonna try to get some questions. I never have enough time. Close application. All right, what I have now in front of me is actually Office 360. And the reason I have Office 360 is because it's an interesting thing that I um, learned a little while ago. And we have dictation in this one. You have, I have right there if I'm using my so I can, but you'll see there's also a new command called dictate that says on Office. And when we talked about speech recognition is learning, okay, speech to text would be dictate. Dictate does not really learn anything. It just tries to do uh, speech to text. And it's very different. One of the things that I found about using Office 360, Office 360, if you have it on your own computer running, it works fine. If you're using it off of our university server, then the voice recognition may not work. So let me kind of show you. This is a demonstration to show how I'm working with the computer. So you saw that it did not do anything at this point. Okay. All right, so let's go to the dictate one. This is a demonstration. Okay. 
this is a demonstration to show how I'm working with the computer period. New paragraph. It's fairly flawless, but it has its own problems. Period. One of the things that it does is it dictate. So what was interesting about this is that um, speech recognition itself, if you're using the speech recognition on Word, it works with everything. But when I go to Office 360 and run from a server, it doesn't work and I have to go to dictate. Problem with dictate, it doesn't have all the same commands um, and you have to really kind of play with it a little bit. An interesting part about this is though if I go to and I'm going to just wipe this out. Dragon actually speaking. I am now using Dragon naturally speaking. To work with Office 360. Correct two. Choose one. Click transfer. Go to sleep. So Dragon actually you can use this and what Dragon has is a command that um, if it doesn't recognize then it can actually comes up and that was what you saw was it's uh, Dragon Pad. Dragon Pad automatically comes up and it allows me a transfer from there. It's a two stage situation and what I really like about it is that it will be intuitive. If there's times it does not understand, there's times it time does not recognize the application, it will go automatically and drag and pad and let you transfer it in. Um, Windows recognition does it to a point, but it's not really as flawless. So when I use uh, Windows recognition, if it doesn't find something, sometimes it will work, sometimes it will not on that one. So those are some of the pros and cons. It's also a demonstration of the two different ones. So let me jump real quick now to basically uh, Google. And Google, you'll know right there is, oh, let me turn off, turn off Dragon. Google has one in which we talk about and it's uh, basically also allows you to type with your voice and it allows you to do controls. And if you see right there the microphone, I have it on the web page editor, which is really nice. Um, it gives me eye there. Um, I will tell you and there's some person that has what are the different languages it works with. Phenomenal amount. Google Docs is also free and a lot of your students are already using them. So let me use Google Docs. Start with a blank one. All right. And if I want to use this one, then I need to do some. You'll notice mine has a little few um, different things and uh, other things I've added a lot of add ons like accessibility. So if I'm going right there and I want to use voice typing, then I go to tools. And now it allows me to click to speak. This is a demonstration of using Google Docs as a voice recognition system period. As I talk, it's learning my voice to a point period. It's mostly using an algorithm, so there may be times I may have to edit the screen and retype it, period. OK, I tried to throw it off, but it got it amazingly accurate on a lot of things. Um, this has the ability also to do it. If I want to have it speech there, I can have it re read aloud to me. Unfortunately, it's um, there is a tool on there, another add-on that allows you basically tools where you can have voice typing, 
Um, you also have where uh, speech and I can have different speech selections. There's a tool called accessibilities and you know different types of things that allow me to read it. It will not read it in my voice. It will read it in others. OK, um, so my British voice is basically there. So let me kind of go and that's the demonstration of Google Docs. It's amazingly accurate and the neat thing about this, if you're working in conjunction with a group of people, and you have difficulty typing or you're thinking on the fly right there, you can actually have a bunch of people and you can still be using this and talking on the fly and talking. I just used to tell people so I'm about to use Google Docs and then I just there because of that my mic will, when I turn my mic on, they will hear that also. So I let people know, but it allows me to come in, edit in there. So let me go ahead and I see the time and I wanna make sure I get your question. That's the most important part here. So I'm stopping sharing. Any what other questions? Where are we going? OK, if we go back to the Petty's question, because now, you know, they were able to see and experience different uh, speech recognition tools. Uh, her question was, which of the applications is easiest to use if one has to include a lot of formatting? Uh, do any of them work bilingually to create documents that are in two languages, such as Spanish and English? Yes, you actually can do that. It's a little bit more. Um, you have to remember I talked about profiles and users in there. You may have to change the profile. So if you're going to talk in one and then you're going to switch to Spanish, the other, although Microsoft has built in a translation for the key already into it, Dragon does not. You'd have to change your profile. As for which is easier, quite honestly, that's like me asking you which car would you like to drive? There's a lot of different ones you really need to try before you buy. The Google Docs is amazingly accessible. It's really um, free. Our students are using it. The problem is that it has some learning curve. The Dragon Dictate that's on the 360 <clears throat> also is fairly accurate, but it doesn't catch everything. Dragon Naturally Speaking and Microsoft Voice Speech Recognition are programs which are trained and you're constantly learning them. So one of the things to recognize is they get better the more you use them. The problem is if you do not use them correctly. As I told you, I have been using voice recognition since the beginning. I've also worked with persons who um, have done voice recognition in the past and have not had success with it. And there's a lot of reasons why. Um, I, I have a whole nother video on that, uh, it, on how to basically work with it to there. But basically what it is, is persons don't follow the rules on recognition. Recognition, you have to correct things when they're in errors. You can't just erase it. If you say delete that or scratch that, it does not correct anything. The moment you say correct that, it then says, oh, I heard you say this a different way. And what did you want to say? And you saw an example of that when it pointed down a couple words and said, what do you want? Two, three, four. And so it constantly gets better and better. The more I use it as well as I correct it. The more I don't use it or don't do the correction, it will propagate my mistakes. Remember how I said that um, when I used discrete words that 400 words made a template of 40,000? That's because of that the algorithms are using a lot of words sound the same or close to it and that can happen. So if you don't correct things in speech recognition, it can have some really devastating points. So the point that I do a lot of teaching of that of how to basically, uh, from the very beginning, we would usually first get you to recognize your voice. Second, we would actually do some simple sentences. And so I have you say 10 sentences and you have to correct them because each time you're correcting them, 
it's building it, it's learning it, it's getting better. And you can move on to the next sentence after you've been able to say it three times. Clean. Okay. The okay, next question is, what do you think? It is about the, you know, the, the talk that we had yesterday. What do you think the future of Dragon Natural Speaking will be after Microsoft purchase Nuance? Great question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been um, Dragon actually naturally speaking actually bought out one of the another speech recognition software company that I actually preferred and they switched over. Um, Microsoft has now dropped sadly dropped uh, bought out Dragon. I am hoping they incorporate the best of both worlds because of that they really are looking to this. There is some things they recognize their own speech recognition programs not doing. My hope is then that this becomes free. For everyone versus cost. Saying that. If you use your phone. If you use basically a tablet, you have features you know that you can press and talk to it and it will write. You write messages to friends. You could take uh, notes on the store. You can dictate messages on the fly. Speech recognition is constantly evolving. More people are making it inclusive. And the algorithms are getting much better and the AI AIs are getting much better at recognizing complex words, complex sentences. Other questions? Good questions. Yes, we have another great question uh, from Melissa. Can multiple speakers talk to Dragon? And if yes, could they use wireless mics? Uh, you can definitely use wireless mics. Um, I or you can use mics from your camera. You can everywhere. Multiple speakers, not so much. What the the ideal that we all want is to have that program in which I don't have to transcribe a bunch of people in a class. And so as I'm talking, everyone else can also talk and you see the speech to text. For that feature, we may have to use other things. As you notice, I'm using Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is allowing for each of those right there a lot better. So um, different people's different voices can go in and but you still see the errors that uh, Ishmael and I Get, are made frequently from our words. And Dow's typing something in. Dow, your words of wisdom. Go for it. <laughs> Dow and Susan have also great experience. And if you have experience, add on to it. You know, for time's sake, I figured I'd just start talking. Um, uh, just related to uh, Melissa's question, do you have any other suggestions of uh, programs or apps uh, that can use multiple speakers? The one I'm using quite honestly is uh, the most is Microsoft Teams. Um, we are also, there's a number of other WebEx and this allows for as long as everyone has microphones in front of them, and it can be a wireless mic and because I have pads, it is pretty good at recognizing everyone's voice. If you have individual mics like Teams, you'll notice it actually says my name and then the transcription. And what's really nice about this is my students who uh, basically need transcriptions or any of my students when we're teaching class like this, they can go through and we could put a transcription service where it captures everything and they can then go through it themselves. And use it later. So if you're right. faculty yeah, remember, yeah, if you're faculty remember your words will go to print and the students can pull your own words up and say, but you said. Any other questions or comments after after today's webinar? Do you have any ideas how you can use in your daily life or in your classrooms? Yeah, what you do, I'm going to add one thing. The biggest thing about voice recognition, it's amazingly proficient. Saying that, not many people use it. Uh, they'll use the quick stuff, but not there. And the reason is, and I have my own students do this all the time, 
they've gotten, we're used to typing on the keyboard. Even though I can talk out a paper at 180, 190 words a minute, and students mostly type at 40 words a minute, and I can increase production because it's spelling everything like that incredibly fast. We're used kinesthetically to that. So when I'm having my students do this, and uh, uh, some of those been in uh, previous lectures of ours, we've talked about, I have uh, at the very beginning of class, a lot of tools, uh, what we call an academic toolkit. And I teach them how to do this in these free systems. And I give them the idea of doing it. And they all love it when they first do it. So then I say, all right, one week, come back to me. How much you use it? And they said, well, no, I really, I did, but then I didn't. It was easier typing or it wasn't easier typing. So then I stop them and I said, you've gotten yourself into a habit. I want you to take yourself off that change that it's easier to type and really force yourself to start using this. And when students do, they find out that happy medium. When can they type versus when is it really more efficient to basically talk and when it is efficient to use their voice. And um, that is something that we've gotten used to typing and we used to using our voice. And especially voice recognition systems are amazingly powerful what they can do just beyond the text that I showed you. Any other questions? Okay, if you don't have any questions, we would like to thank you all for joining us today. And as I mentioned in my uh, at the beginning of the presentation, if you want to have an access to the recording, please uh, type your email address to the chat or you can email me or Dr. Dawson your email address. So we will be happy to share after it is captionings are modified, you know, the correct mistakes were corrected. And I again shout out to our student disability services okay, team and Dow, and they are great again with helping students on this right there and answering questions if you need it. And we will also be glad to answer questions as well as have a demonstration in our lab. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Thank you. All right, and with that, Dr. D